drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be running through issues you can face with your grandfather brewing system and how to fix them. The most important thing to say here is don't panic. The majority of issues can be fixed at home quickly and in the event of a component failure, Grainfather Customer Service has a great reputation for a speedy and pain-free replacement process. In the event of a problem that cannot be resolved, always contact your retailer first where you purchased your system from. Many retailers will hold spare parts and they can get you back brewing very quickly. Let's start off by looking at issues that are related to power. First of all, systems that are heating but are doing so slowly. There are two things that could be causing this. Firstly, some power extension leads will not fully power larger devices like a brewing system. Ensure that yours can if you must use an extension lead or plug directly into your power socket. The other issue here could be that if you're using the older grandfather system, then this had an element switch. When ramping up to full power, ensure that the button is set to the normal setting rather than MASH. If you have upgraded to a Kinect controller, then leave this button in this setting the whole time. Now let's look at what to do if you simply have no heating at all. Firstly, make sure, if you have a newer grandfather, that the side power switch is set to ON. This is found at the base of the unit as shown on the screen. You will find that your Kinect controller will still power up, even if you don't have this button on. The next thing to check is underneath the brewing system itself, and this is a safety system that could need to be reset. This is found in the middle of the bottom of the system. This will trip if you try to heat without water or burn the bottom of your system, for example. Push it in and you should be back in business. Because of the location of this reset switch, many people, myself included, brew on top of a half pallet so that the button can be reached during a brew. I've not had it trip on me yet though. Next, let's have a look at the system not reaching the boil temperature. Again, using certain types of extension leads that will not allow sufficient power can cause this. Either buy one that is suitable or plug directly into power. The next point is to know what your actual boiling point is. People have been known to just use a standard boiling point like 100 degrees Celsius, but many people live in areas of high elevation, and because of this their boiling point is actually lower. Mine, for example, where I live is 99 degrees Celsius. The homebrewing myth that wort needs to have a vigorous boil has long been disproven. Other circumstances where boiling point might be an issue would be brewing outside in less than ideal temperature conditions. You can, however, improve your grandfather's performance in this regard in general by adding a grandfather grain jacket. Moving on now to look at pump and filter issues. It's fair to say that these issues can be caused by a faulty pump, but in the vast majority of cases it is simply where people need to fix something at their end. The most common cause is being where grain is being crushed way too finely and these small particles combine within pipes or the pump itself and cause blocks. Do not assume that the grain crush is fine just because it's being milled by a homebrew store. Another issue can be where the user is not whirlpooling at the end of the boil and has used a high amount of hops. In addition to this, there is the ball and spring within the recirculation arm that is there as a safety measure that needs to be cleaned after every brew. If this is left, then you will have potentially another blocking point. Depending on the severity of these issues will depend on the action needed to get it fixed. These issues can be as small as a noticeable slowdown in your wart flow or as large as a complete stop with the pump making just a humming noise. The first check is to see if the ball and spring is clear of debris as follows. Simply unscrew the top section of the recirculation pipe of your hand and catch the ball and spring in your palm. If this is clear, then all good. If not, clear it of debris and put it back. The ball and spring is in place as a safety feature and as such is worth using. I have never not used it and have had no issues. 
The next check and fix is to attach a bicycle pump or similar to the end of your wall out hose on your Calflow chiller or the recirculation arm itself with the ball and spring removed. Several pumps is usually all that is needed to see your wart bubble and you are block free again. If this does not fix the issue then you will need to remove your wart from your grain father by tipping it into a bucket. Then you will fix a hose into the recirculation pipe with the ball and spring removed and shoot water quickly down the recirculation pipe. This will mean you either have a very firm block in this pipe or there's something wrong with your pump. But you should also do the same with your counterflow chiller if the issue exists just with that. It's very rare but worth mentioning. If this does not work then you should remove the pump itself by unscrewing the two screws that hold it in place and removing the silicon hosing. Dismantle the pump itself and check for blocks and also ensure that the o-rings are in the correct place as shown in the diagram here. This will not have a negative influence on your warranty. Check the pump again now and if the problem remains then contact your retailer for a replacement pump. Now lastly what to do if you knock your filter off. You will find that doing this will really clog up your pipes and pump. This happened to me once and I ended up having to take the route of clearing the pipe using a long tough wooden stick. But depending on how bad it is you may need to empty the grain father and blow out the pipe using a hose as shown before. Unblock wires used for plumbing and such like can also be very useful here. Just make sure you turn off the pump and do not use too much force. Nice fixes to avoid this in the first place are firstly to use a stainless steel clamp on the connector, attaching it to the body as you can see here. This I have found is the weakest point. With this fix in place the filter will remain in place even during the most vigorous whirlpool and you will need to hit it directly for it to be coming off again. Secondly I have wrapped stainless steel sheeting to enclose the end cap. This can be obtained online with between 200 to 300 micron holes being suitable. End of problem. If you have completed your usual cleaning cycle and yet you still have some stains on your bottom plate then there is an easy process to follow to get you back in business. Before we move on to this though let's look at how to prevent this in the first place. Firstly Grainfather themselves suggest that during the boil you will scrape the bottom plate with your brewing spoon at least twice during the boil. This will remove build up and make cleaning easier. If you are using a grain crush that is too fine then this will also cause debris to hit the bottom which increases the likelihood of bottom plate burning. Also if you are adding sugars during your brew then be sure to at least partly dissolve them outside of the system before adding them. Once you do add them give them a good stir at the bottom to avoid any issues. Ok so back to cleaning now then. After your usual process try giving the stains a scrub with something that cannot cause scratching. This is essentially soft cloths, microfiber, sponges, plastic scouring pads and plastic brushes. If you still have staining after this then add a couple of litres of water to your system and have a couple of tablespoons of either Grainfather High Performance Cleaner or PPW. Heat this up to 55 degrees C for an hour and then let it sit overnight. Usually this will be the end of it. If not, simply repeat. Once your bottom plate looks clean then rinse in water and then add some diluted star sand to the bottom plate. Not much is needed, just enough to cover it. Leave this overnight and then remove it. This will remove even more deposits than in the end that cannot even be seen by the eye. And this is good practice for all. Lastly let's address water volume issues. I have a separate video that gives you all methods for making these calculations. Do keep in mind though that these will not be precise for everybody. It really depends on your brewing environment and the ingredients used. Different temperatures and levels of humidity will come into play as well as different water absorption rates for your grain and hops. You should expect a different result if you brew outside compared to inside. If you brew in the same area each time then it should be easy to narrow things down by simply writing down any differences for each brew and then through this you can fine tune your water volumes. 
So there you have it. I do hope that you have found this video to be both useful and enjoyable. Please do give me feedback, no matter if it's positive or negative. There is little to be gained by leaving a thumbs up or a thumbs down if I do not know the reason for your choice. Naturally, my aim is to make videos that all can enjoy. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I'm a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!